guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and in today's video we are continuing with the reviews from the 12 books uh, for 2022 so the challenge of last year and today we are going to talk about the november book and that is salome by oscar wilde this is a play it is a very short work. I marked many things so I could remember to talk to you about them. But just to begin with, I have to give you a warning. In this video, I'm going to talk openly and freely about this work. Uh, so if you don't want to get spoilers of the story, maybe you shouldn't watch it or you should read it first and then come back to the video or if you don't mind with spoilers let's continue right okay so first things first i read this in a portuguese edition this one this edition had a preface and I read the preface, then I read the play and then I come back to the preface and read the play again. So I reread this book back to back um, because I was feeling that I was missing some, something, that my interpretation wasn't being totally correct and if you weren't for the preface, I wouldn't have the contextualization of the play, where it's coming from, in what it's based on, um, and of course some um, hidden messages from Oscar Wilde through his work, this particular work. So the preface was a salvation to me. I'm, as I have said in previous videos, this is not any news to you. I have some difficulty in extracting the behind meanings of liter literature works. So I have to do, to reread and extrapolate what the author was meaning in that passage so I have difficulties doing so it's something that I want to work on and I want to be better at um, being able by myself getting there and this work this book in particular was a challenge in that way so so short as you can see but <laughs> it was enough for me to burn my brains so I'm thinking to talking to you about the plot of the play as I've said with spoilers because I think um, for me to point out some commentaries in each um, each specific point of the story I have to do it with the spoilers so if you don't mind it thank you and please um, continue watching if you don't mind it well maybe you should read it first if you are interested in it okay so about the characters we have here a page where we have a list of the characters. So we have Erodes Antipas, the Tetrarch of Judea, Yochanan, the prophet, the young Syrian, the captain of the guard, Tigellino, a young Roman, and then we have soldiers, slaves, Jews, Nazarenes, uh, Na Naman, that is the, how do you say it? 
the man who kills people in their final if they were sentenced he is the man who kills them then we have Irudias, the wife of the tetrarch so the wife of Herodes. Salome, daughter of Herodias, and the slaves of Salome. The ambience of this story is that the Tetrarch is giving a party, a banquet, in his palace. And his palace has a terrace. Um, and we begin the story with soldiers uh, appreciating the night and in having conversations about Jews. So, who are the, those howling beasts? They are Jews. They are always like that. They are discussing their religion. They do it continuously. So, comments like that so in here we have some caricatures as you uh, could understand by now so we have conversations between soldiers between the captain of the guard and some slaves they're talking about the jews as i said and then we hear a voice and that is the voice of yokanan that's the prophet where he's giving like lectures to who wants to hear him it's like monologues because he's arrested in a um, dungeon in the palace but he speaks so loud that everyone can listen to him and he speaks about that the Lord will come and the blind will see light and the, hear, the ears of death will open so things like that and they ask of whom they talk he's talking about and they say that is a man who has disciples that is in the desert with a savage look but they don't know who they talk who he is talking about and in these conversations we find out that Herodes the tetrarch of Judea killed his brother and is now married to his wife, so the wife of the brother. So here we have a glimpse of the games of power between families to know who will rule it all. So that's a hint. And then we come in Salome, as I was uh, saying before, to the terrace. So she comes out of the party to the terrace where were the soldiers and the slaves. Um, and she makes a comment saying that is odd how the husband of her mother looks at her. Like he, in a way that we understand that maybe sexual and she says that she doesn't understand the meaning but in fact she does and then she makes comments about the jews about barbarians about greeks about egyptians about romans not so good like critics so she says that the jews because all of these all of these people were in the party in the banquet and she was bored by them because the Jews contradict him, contradict each other because of uh, his silly ceremonies. The barbarians drink without stop, spreading wine in the floor. The Greeks, with their faces painted and their hairs frizzed in a spiral. The Egyptians silence and subtles with long nails of jade and tunics and dark tunics and the Romans with their brutality, their rudeness and bad words. 
and they she even she adds that they are vulgar people that think they are great so <laughs> a social critic in here about almost all the um, uh, old people that live in the world and then Salome becomes begins hearing the voice of Yokanan and she wants to know who that man is and she says that he's saying things about her mother and there comes to a point where she wants that they let go of Yokanan so she can talk to, talk to him. But the young Syrian, that's the captain of the guard, says he can do that because he has to obey the tetrarch. And Salome begins like seducing him in a way, saying that she will pass and will let go of her veil and will smile at him and so on and so forth and the young Syrian, the captain guard, gives in and orders the soldiers to bring the prophet, Yokanan. And then we have a conversation of death like Yokanan speaks, Salome responds, saying that yes, it's my mother that he's talking about. And the young Syrian says, no, no, it's not. And she responds, yes, it is. And Yokanan continues in his monologue. And there comes a point where Yokanan asks who that woman is. And why is she looking at him? And he says, go back, daughter of Babylon. Don't come near the chosen of the Lord. Your mother filled the land with wine and immoralities. And the clamor of her sins comes to the ears of God. And so maybe comes a bit strange in a way because she asks him to continue speaking because his voice inebriates her and Yokanan rejects her and she, began, she begins complimenting his body but Yokanan rejects her again and there's when Salome Ch Swifts Swifts? Is that how we say it? I think it is and she criticizes him, saying that his body is ugly and it's um, of his mouth that she's enamored. And she says, like in a promise, that she will one day kiss his mouth. His mouth. And then we have a situation uh, where the young Syrian, our uh, captain of the guard, kills himself. And in the first time I read it, I didn't understand why he killed himself. But the second time I read it, I could figure out that perhaps he had so morally high standards that he allowed himself to be seduced by the princess, Salome, and disobey his orders and because of that he become he became so upset by that that he killed himself but like that happening it's like it, Salome is indifferent Salome continues to talk about the prophet and Yokanan says something in here that it's like a prophecy he says, don't you have fear, son of Irodias, daughter of Irodias? Didn't I told you that I would, I would hear in the palace the clap of the wings of the angel of death? And the angel didn't come. And we will see this phrase being said by another character further on. And Yokanan says 
to Salome that she is the daughter of adultery and there is only one man that, that can save her and that man that I told you about, go looking for him, is in a ship in the Sea of Galilee, talking to his disciples, kneel in the margin and call his name. When he comes to you, he come because he comes to whomever calling call his name. Ask him for remission of your sins. And Salome doesn't stop saying, let me kiss your mouth. It's only what she says, repeatedly. And then Yochanan goes down to the dungeon and the soldiers are discussing what they're going to do with the body of the young Syrian. But there's when Erodes, Irudias and the court come in in the terrace, looking for Salome. They, they see the body, right? Um, and Erodes makes a comment saying that Erodes the Tetrarch of Judea, saying to another character that he thought that was only Roman philosophers that kill themselves. And Tijolino, that's another character, responds, some of them kill themselves. They are Stoics. They are people, they are very, very rude people, ridiculous people. So another critic to part of the society. And they explain in here the story of the young Syrian that I don't think is particularly important. And then we have like a conversation between Erodes, Irudias, and in between we hear the voice of Yochanan, the prophet. And Irudias criticizes Erodes, saying that he's a coward that he he's fearful of Yochanan and Erodes is like no I'm not um, and he the, he doesn't say anything bad about me he just says bad things about our enemies so Herodes uh, flees from the discussion And the road begins asking Irudias, asking, I'm sorry, asking Salome for her to dance to him, for him. And, um, and Salome says, what will he give in return? And Irudias, her mother, says to her that she shouldn't dance. But Salome continues and asks what she'll get in return and Erodes responds that he will give anything that you want, even half of his kingdom. And they go back and forth with this, do you swear, um, yes I do, so on and so forth. Uh, and. Salome starts dancing, she is the dance of the seven veils and she dances with, um, with, her, foot, with her feet uh, on the floor because she takes her sandals off. Then we, we see Erod saying that it would be very bad for her to dance in blood that was spilled on the floor because he's a bad presage. So we, we here have all the um, clues for what is going to happen at the end. Because there's a point in, in here 
but before that, okay, so Soma dances and then Erodes asks her what she wants and she answers that she wants the head of Yokanan. And Erodes says, well, I can give you everything except that. And they go back and forth saying that he swore, he make uh, an oath that he promised to give everything that she wanted and there is a bit of uh, hesitation from Erodes because he doesn't want to kill Yokanan. but there, there comes a point where he gives in and he orders the, um, the soldiers to go, to go and kill Yokanan and bring his head and they bring, in, they bring his head in a platter of silver and Salome it's like in a trance because she becomes talking to the head like in a monologue saying absurd things that she will kiss his mouth and she really does that and then we have so Irudish, her mother, didn't want her to dance, but when her daughter asked for the head of Yokanan, Irudish was thrilled. She was all about it and agreed with Salome. She was content uh, because she wanted the death of Yokanan. And Salome is like, as I was saying, is if easy is if as she were in a trance, like she's not really making sense. She mumbles and say, says things that are weird. And then Erodes turns back to the palace, but before he enters, he turns no, he turns over, and he says kill that woman and so the soldiers smash her with the, chill, with the shields Salome, daughter of Irudias, princess of Judea and so something that I didn't know and it was because I read the preface that I became aware of it so this play was based on a character of the Gospel of St. Marcus, so a biblical passage. And Oscar Wilde wrote this play in one night. He was in a dinner with some friends and he was explaining his idea to, to them. And as he was explaining, the inspiration came and so when he goes, when he went to his hotel, I think, he had some papers in his desk and that's why he decided to begin writing and that's how Salome was made. And according to the preface, the outcome of this brief and intense moment of in inspiration was a written text not to please any director or auditorium, but uniquely to please himself. So Oscar Wilde wrote this play in French, although he was an Englishman, because he admired the language and it was the attraction by the French language that took him to write this play in French. So this was published in France in French, in Paris and London in 1893 and the play pleased an actress called Sarah Bernhardt that decides to gather a cast, a French cast and she will play Salome and the, rehe the rehearsals begin in the Palace Theatre in London with the presence of Oscar Wilde and he was 
of course very um, content with that but the danger of censorship begins and it it's put the hypothesis of a prohibition because it includes biblical characters according to a law a, a protestant reform of some or something like that and Oscar Wilde um, becomes furious about it and he threatens to leave England and become French. But eventually this will be played in Paris in February, February of 1896. But the author was then imprisoned um, for his homosexual practices implicating the corruption of minors. So he had a also very bohemian life, right? So in the Bible, the heroine is also a young princess victim of an intense and irresistible passion that will lead her to a violent death. And this type of choice was apparently um, a theme in between the French art in artists of the end of the century. So there's here a, a reflection that I want to read to you that I think that conveys the meaning of this play. So the confrontation between Yokanan and Salome would come like being faced in a, the perspective of a dramatization of the more deeply conflict of the author. In one hand, the Ruskian moralism, reflection of the obsessed epoch by ethic and led here by extremes of a rigid fanatism and on the other hand the free sensualism and without limits suggested by the aestheticism petriano. The annihilation of both shows the conclusion that is found in the picture of Dorian Gray by the words of the of Wilde himself of Oscar Wilde himself, every excess of as every renounce englobes his own punishment. So I think this phrase encapsulates everything that this play is about. So you can't be all good, you can't be all bad. You can be extremes because both of them will lead you nowhere because life or will lead you till a point. So life is about balance. It's yin and yang. We have a bit of good, a bit of bad, and we try to find equilibrium, balance. It's really interesting, this phrase, and I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I think that this was a critic, a social critic, a caricature of some people, uh, ancient people, a caricature of the, the, the sad, pure of hearts, that only see the righteous thing to do and don't um, allow anything out of that order to be permitted. And on the other hand, the libertines, the bohemians, the sexual active and promiscuous people also have bad points 
And so everything is a balance and fanatism isn't the answer. In which way you are talking about? Fanatism as in and of itself is not a good path to go to. So these were my comments I, that I wanted to do with the help, of course, of the text of the preface. If you weren't for the preface, I would have some difficulties understanding this play. But I think it's worth it. If you uh, know Oscar Wilde, like myself, I can talk for myself. I have read The Picture of Dorian Gray and I really enjoyed it. I think I, I read an edition that was censored. So I'm planning to buy uh, an edition that is uncensored so I can have the complete experience of that book. Uh, but I really enjoyed the writing of Oscar Wilde, so that's why I became seduced <laughs> to buy uh, this. And knowing it was a play, but I wanted to um, read other formats of literature um, like poetry, plays, and so that's why I bought it. And I can say that I really enjoyed it. I can say that. But it was worth it. It was interesting, to say the least. The, it's, it was funny in some parts. I, I'm saying that I didn't enjoy so much because of my trouble understanding the meaning. So maybe I'm a bit biased because of that. But overall, I think this is an excellent experience, excellent reading experience. And be careful if you are like me and have some trouble understanding the meaning of things. If you find a, a, an edition where it comes with support texts and prefaces, um, notes by the editor or by another author, so support texts where you can find a more elaboration and contextualization of the work. So yeah, that's my advice for you. So I'm going to say the goodbye so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on instagram i'll be posting there whenever i have a book review to do or anything else and that's it i see you on the next one bye